Hello everyone, it's Allison from Determined to Shine, where we use the magic formula of creativity, spiritual connection, and community to bring forth joy in our lives. And boy, am I feeling joyful and excited and thrilled, because I have The Mystic Martian Oracle by Lisa Porter, and I am here for it. So excited. This deck is published by Rockpool, and it actually is released in the USA on November 1st, but it is out in Australia, and I pre-ordered a copy from Book Depository and waited for it to come from Australia so that I could have it early, even though it felt like I was waiting forever <laughs> once it shipped. But I, you guys know, I love Oracle cards. I love bright colors. I love silly and weird things. So we've got a lot of it covered. And what you may or may not know is that I also love space and sci-fi. So when I saw this deck first advertised, I think either last year or early this year, I was like counting down the days from the very beginning. So I'm here. I've got the deck. I've got my alien skulls. I've got my space rocks. Um, these are all like tectites and moldavite and crystals that are kind of from meteors or you know the sky rather than like the earth well both right it's all very exciting anyway let's look at the mystic martian oracle shall we because it's amazing so we've got the guidebook here um pretty standard rock pool presentation in terms of the box and the cards but check it out look at these lime green edges Holy bananas. So, so cute. Loving it, loving it already. So we're going to look at the guidebook quickly before we kind of dive into the cards, just so you can get a sense of what this deck is about. I've had a brief look, but for the most part, you're getting my first impressions right now. And I'm definitely going to need to spend some time with this deck before I really know how it reads and how it works for me. So the cards are split into um, extraterrestrial archetypes and sacred geometry linking cards. And so she kind of goes into the introduction. You've got some example spreads. Um, I'm excited to try this Martian spread. I think that will be fun. And then it does go pretty quickly into the cards. And, you know, I was curious to see, like, does she perceive these archetypes as literal and like for sure existing or is it, you know, a more fantasy presentation, et cetera. And like, it's a little bit unclear from the guidebook. Um, I think that, you know, it's, it's as real as we make it. Right. And then of course the sacred geometry linking cards are going to have some concepts we are a little more familiar with, but, um, very, very excited to play with this. So we've got the um, card backs with this like planetary, fiery, bubbly eyeball type imagery. Very busy backs. I like the back. I don't love the back. And then again, those edges are gorgeous. And let's, of course, dive into the cards. And so we can see them better, I guess I will zoom in even though it means temporarily taking my magic rocks off the screen, <laughs> right? Here we go. Um, sorry, I'm trying. That's what I'm looking for. A little bit of a, a zoom. So I'm not going to pronounce all these right. Like, let's just get that right out of the way. So we have the Agarthans, the Manifesting Multidimensional Perception and Attunement. Alpha Centaurians. Alpha Draconians, Corrupt Unethical Cults, Andromedans. I love this card. And I love, you know, if you spend some time with these, there's a lot happening, right, in the symbolism of every card. And let's just actually pause here and take a look at what the guidebook shows you for each card. So you get a little history of the Andromedans, where they come from, 
um, says they're probably the oldest race that visits our galaxy, an abstract and dimensionally fluid species. So they kind of talk about how they travel, um, how other extraterrestrials feel about them, how they, oh, this, sorry, <laughs> this is how they feel about us, and um, kind of about theirs. Then we've got a lot of keywords for the card meaning, which I love because we can really dive into that well. And then reversed meanings as well. So that's kind of what we're seeing in the guidebook, okay? All right. Anu Anunnaki, controlling, drama, conflict of interest. So you definitely see the, the contrasts happening there. Arcturians, this is one I'm familiar with hearing about. It's a really, like this is like a, an alien I wanna be friend with. Oh, 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 you can't see it cause it's off the screen, but look, look. It's, 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 it's her, it's her. I'm gonna freak out. I'm going to freak out. <laughs> Sorry. I love to meditate with crystal skulls and I haven't done that yet with this skull and I'm just having a moment. So I'm going to have to have some time with this crystal and this card and like, let's get all up in our, in our woo and our spacely creatures here. Right. Okay. Blue avians. Ebens. Ah. The grays short. I'm wondering if next might be the grays tall. Here we are. Um, I'm going to actually zoom out just a hair because my camera is having a little bit of trouble focusing at quite that magnification. So let's have a look there. Okay. I think that might work better. The Lyrans. Another race I'm used to hearing about. I also like just really am digging this 80s jumpsuit vibe. Like I, I kind of want, I kind of just want that outfit. We have the mantis beings. And I will um, see if I can do a reading at the end of this video, just so we can kind of see how a card might um, show up for us. Okay, so we've got the men in black. Here come the men in black. Sorry, you know I had to. Nagas, Nagas, not sure. Um, kind of like snake mermaids. Oh, I'm surprised I haven't seen that before. Um, okay. I don't know how to say that. The Pleiadians. Pleiadians. Um, I usually hear Pleiades. So Pleiadians, Pleiadians. Mm. Unconditional love, excitement, and laughter. Really beautiful. The Reptilians. This actually has a really like Dungeons and Dragons vibe for me. Um, or like actually, um, I, I'm such a nerd, <laughs> like I'm just revealing my nerd level here. Um, played a RPG game, tabletop game with several friends right before the pandemic where, um, it was called Starfinder. We were all in space and our, our ship was called the Hot Dog Gaga because I love hot dogs and I don't know what went from there, but we had some reptilian creatures. So that's what made, this what made me think of. Okay. Syrians. We've got a couple different kinds of Syrians here. We have Syrians A and B. Um, either way, I would really enjoy being on that planet. I just, I love the water. Look at all those moons. Oh, so beautiful. Tall whites. Tau Cetian, Cetians? The Galactic Federation, okay. Obviously, I'm going to feel Star Trek vibes here, right? And again, like when we're looking at the guidebook, um, you know, it may obviously say something different. But for me, of course, I'm, I'm going to feel all the Star Trek things and all my pop culture is going to play into how I read this deck with the open mind that, of course, I really believe in so many different things being possible. Love the, this one here. Um, Venusians or Ven Venetians uh, from Venus. Um, I assume. So, yes, pop culture plus magic and unlimited possibilities, right? I got, I got my Moldavite. I got my, my skull. I'm, I'm ready to go here. Okay, these are the sacred geometry cards. So we're going from here. I really like the four element cards. They're really beautiful. So, um, from what I saw in my first flip through, this is my second flip through, but it's still kind of first impressions because I barely had a peek. I was just trying to get a sense of it. So air element, 
And I like to use element cards as altar cards a lot when I'm working on different things. So these ones will definitely um, show up for me. Alchemy and the Philosopher's Stone. This is an amazing card. Of course, people are going to think a Harry Potter reference there. Um, you know, take a little of it. But alchemy, right? How do we alchemize our lives? What do we want to bring forward? What do we want to change? What do we want to create from our gunk, right? Our, it's lead into gold, but it, it doesn't have to be literal alchemy. Crop circles. Earth element. Another great, great card. Element card. Love this flower of life. Inspiration, awe, and dreams. Here's our fire card. This card's intense. Like, um, there's just so much surrender here, right? Like surrendering and letting go and allowing the old to burn away. I love that. Golden ratio. The Kabbalah tree of life. The Merkaba. Merkaba. I love. This is my favorite sacred symbol. I have quite a few crystals and things in this shape. It's just a really powerful part of my own journey. So always happy to see that. We've got our, of course, famous snake um, kind of eating itself. That's that traditional um, symbol, though I do not usually see it with wings. Pentagram. Shadow self. Really, like, what are we hiding from ourselves? Star seed. The self, memories, identity. And this is really about us tapping into our own past, right? Third eye. The Vesica Pisces. Um, this is just really beautiful. And our water element card. Love it. So let's do a little reading, just a, a mini, a mini reading. Like, what do you need to know today, right? So I'm going to zoom back out. So much zoom action on this, this video. Um, so just take a pause, right? And ask yourself, like, what do I, what do I need to know right now? Is there a place where you're feeling stuck? Like, I think so many of us are feeling, like, just frustration and stagnancy, and there's so much we can't control right now, like, in the world. So tap into whatever's coming up for you about that. Like, what feels loudest? What feels the hardest to deal with or think about? And where do you feel stuck? And then let's let's ask these Mystic Martian cards. Let's ask your your higher self. Um, and these, these archetypal beings, like what, what wisdom do you have for me about this situation? What can I do about this? How can I transform what's going on? How can I alchemize, right? Like, <laughs> sorry about that. Had a card drop. Um, you know, these MS hands, <laughs> um, I thought that that tremor. It happens, you know, it just happens sometimes. All right. Let's, let's see what the cards have to say. You can't make this up people. Remember, I was so excited to, to dive in with my skull and I had such a powerful thing come up for me when I was thinking about my own situation while I was inviting you to. So, okay. I'm going to share what I think, but first, um, we're going to go to the guidebook and just take a look here. Okay. And then we'll kind of dive into what this card, um, what wisdom it has to offer you for whatever your stuckness is. So I'm not going to read this whole, whole thing because in this guidebook, traditionally, like this part, I mean, if you want to read all this, you can pause it, right? But this part of the guidebook is a description of the Arcturians. So basically, it talks about where they're from, like which constellation. They are a fifth and higher dimensional civilization and are the most advanced extraterrestrials of our Milky Way galaxy. They are non-polarized and anchor in conscious awareness of radiant love and healing compassion. They find our three-dimensional space a harsh thing to experience, but they do have the capacity to exchange um, lower 3D frequencies like with us, alchemically transmuting them for 
uh, period of time. So it kind of talks about how they operate, a little bit about size, etc., and um, kind of just their, you know, history, how they like to communicate, etc. Um, and then here are our card meetings, okay? So we have the wisdom keepers, feeling safe, concern, coherent, prudent, emotional intelligence, deep, quiet achiever, tri trial and error, listening, sensible, soul searching, reserved, confident, friend, mentor, insightful, rational, rational, and conscientious. And then, um, the other thing I just, I had saw this and I turned the page and then I wanted to go back. Like it talked about how the Arcturians chose to terminate their physical life through agreed contracts for the highest development of their species well-being around the age of 400 Earth years. Um, or that's that they choose to. So um, they live for about 400 years and then they, they choose to release themselves, right, from their physical being for the benefit of others. So I just find that Interesting, right? Because so much of the conflict that so many of us are dealing with in the world right now is there's so much anger and selfishness and frustration around us. And even like this card, right? Like she, and I don't know that she's a she, but she's a she to me on this card. Like she looks like a therapist, right? <laughs> like she's She's listening. She's here. She's concerned. Like, she's communing with this this person. Like, maybe that's me. Maybe that's you, right? Um, like, pour a cuppa and have a conversation. And I really just love that. And I think that the key here is to, like, slow down and listen to our inner wisdom and our higher selves. And, like, so often, you know, something I talk about with in Determined to Shine, like in our retreats and our events and classes is, you know, people in the spiritual community talk all the time about the importance of gratitude, right? Like being gratitude for being in a state of gratitude for what we have in our lives helps us change our vibration. It helps us um, move more and more and more into joy. And that's true. Sometimes it's hard, but it, it's, it's proven. That's why it keeps coming up over and over and over again. But, 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 where I think the real magic comes from is in generosity. Because gratitude, even when we're very much trying to actively be thankful, it's a passive state sometimes. Whereas generosity is an action. Like, what can we give? What can we give? of ourselves, of our time, of our heart, of our soul? What can we share with other people? So I want to challenge you to take a look at that thing that's making you crazy, that place where you feel stuck, like you can't move, and consider how an act of generosity could help you shift, right? So um, know that I think you're awesome. I'm so excited that you joined me for this video. Um, and that you're here in general. If you'd like to stick around, definitely subscribe, hit the like button, leave a comment, all those YouTube things, la la la. Everyone tells you those things. They do help. That's why. Help us make more content, um, all of us YouTubers out there. But just know that I, I so value you here. I hope that you leave me a comment and let me know that you watched the video. If the message resonated with you, what do you think of the deck? Do you love it? Do you hate it? And somewhere in between, I obviously love it. I'm so excited to dive in more with this card and my my little school friend over here. And um, yeah, check out the description box for all the links on, you know, spending more time with me. If you should so desire, we have an amazing retreat coming up in a couple of weeks in October. And I would love, love, love to have you join us. But whether you do or whether you just hang out here on YouTube, know that you are right on time. And what I mean by that is, like, we spend so much of our lives being rushed, feeling like we're, we're out of time, we should be doing something else, and we have so much shame and guilt about so much stuff, and then we have shame and guilt about the fact that we have shame and guilt. So just let it go. Breathe in the magic. Know that you are right where you're meant to be in this time, and that... If all is not well now, it certainly will be because um, bet your bottom dollar that that sun does in fact come up tomorrow. So 
Lots of love to you from my heart and have an amazing, amazing day, week, month, year, etc. But I'll be back in a couple of days with more fun. So have an amazing day and I'll see you next time. <laughs>